I didn't have the stick to itness to like really work full time and then come home and parent. And then like between the hours of nine and 11 PM, like actually teach myself to code enough to be at a point where I felt like anyone would take me seriously. Um, but I was really enjoying it. And so, um, then I started looking into like, how can I take this next step? I really think if I can spend my full day just learning to code and not working a completely unrelated job for eight hours of the day, um, I would probably learn a lot faster and a lot more effectively. So that kind of led me to researching boot camps, which led me to learn. I live in San Diego, so um, I kind of liked that it was local for me. The internship program was really unique. I, I hadn't found any other boot camps that had this kind of internship connection. Um, yeah. And so that is how I sort of the journey of how I found my way from working with kids who have autism to taking that leap to um, joining a boot camp. So I want to go back to when you were talking about uh, identifying what I might call an ideal learning style and mm -hmm. kind of fitting it into your life. How big of a hurdle did it feel on identifying and then making the decision that you were going to quit your job, leave that profession, and then move full time into something? Given all of that criticism you found on Reddit and, and given all of that kind of that big hurdle of not just paying for a program, but also I'm assuming losing that income as well. Like walk me through where you were at in that place and what drove you to still push forward and do it anyway. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, one thing that helped was I felt like if it, all failed and it didn't work out, I could always go back. You know, I wasn't going to um, lose my credentials or, you know, it, by doing this, I wasn't necessarily shutting off other options. So that was a comfort to me um, that it wasn't like, I mean, obviously I wanted it to work out because like I said, I was very burned out, but I was like, if, if it comes down to it and I just can't cut it, like I could still get a job. Like, you know, this is something that I want to do, but I feel like I have a backup plan, which is good. Um, and it did take some planning. So, um, you know, my husband ended up, he kind of changed some things about the way that he was working. Um, and we had to make some arrangements with our schedule and, you know, all kinds of different planning factors went into place. But um, in terms of making the big decision, um, I think that Really, um, a big start part of it too was the jumpstart weekend and feeling like, okay, there's all this sort of like little pieces of knowledge that I've accumulated trying to teach myself. And then coming into jumpstart and being like, okay, we're just working on this all day it felt amazing and <laughs> was like, this, um, this is my learning style, like having somebody to talk to, to ask a question to, having teammates to work with, being able to dedicate my entire brain space to learning and not um, be thinking about other stuff since that program happens on a weekend. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I mean, it just felt right. And it felt, at least in my personal situation, um, like I had enough wiggle room to have a fallback in case I failed at it, but <laughs> happily. For yes. me that so you weren't fully burning the boats. In other words, it's not like you were eliminating all options and diving in full steam ahead without an, you know, without a way to go backwards if necessary. Right. But I'm curious, yeah. like how much of that safety net played a role in your decision-making process? Was it, it sounds like it must've been pretty significant. Um, or was it more like, well, I have no, in, like I'm, I'm bored of that job. I don't want to do that anymore. I have zero intentions to go back, but if I had to, I could, you it know, was more walk me I, through that. No. Yeah. I mean, so basically the position that I was in before required this credential, which can you need to renew every two years. So right before I started my boot camp, I like 
did everything up, I don't know, the renewal process, basically you can put it on hold for two years too. And so I like prepped everything as if like, okay, I'm putting it on hold. I can come back to it if needed. So I did put in a fair amount of like forward front loading with planning and like just want to have all my ducks in a row so that just in case I'm ready, but that's, I'm like a very, think of all the possible solutions and have a contingency plan for everything kind of a person. Um, so that was just something I think I needed to do personally to feel comfortable with making that leap forward is like to have sort of a backup plan. Um, but I, I do think that once I started the boot camp, it really like then I really felt like this is what I want to be doing and I really don't want to go to my backup plan. So, I mean, before I actually started the boot camp, I also didn't know what it would be like. You know, I mean, I had an idea of it, but it wasn't until I was maybe a month into it that I was like, this is it. I love this. I want to do this. And, you know, whatever it takes, I'm going to I'm going to make the software career change work because this is so much more my mental health is just so much better than when I was doing my previous career.